So uh, the next thing, I uh, am actually doing this later than the other ones were filmed because I was about to upload sitting up at the lake and I realized there were two other things I meant to mention. Um, <coughs> one is uh, the modifiability of the Rivian. And when I say modifiability, the first thing uh, that comes to mind is a winch. So can you put a winch on it? Um, don't know. Auto journalists uh, didn't say anything about it or mention it. Can you take the bumper off and replace it with an aftermarket that has a winch, uh, a winch plate uh, so you can install a winch? Don't know. They don't mention anything about it. Could you put a bull bar on it? Don't know. They don't mention anything about it. Uh, light attachment points, which granted, a lot of people who put lights all over their vehicles don't need them. But for those that do, uh, if you're going to be out there at night, uh, can you do that? Are there easy places like on a Jeep to attach the lights? Don't know. Auto journalists didn't mention that. You know, it's uh, these sorts of things that it would have been nice if they had touched on and maybe somebody had asked Rivian, you know, since you're, oh, I don't know, a journalist. Uh, but they didn't. Uh, but something that if you're building an adventure vehicle, which is what they're marketing it and selling it as and what people are, I assume, going to buy it to do, uh, might be nice to, to know because first thing you should have on a vehicle, in my opinion, is a winch, uh, especially if you're going to be out there by yourself. You have to be able to recover yourself if you're alone and uh best way to do it is with a winch uh but we don't know about that uh the other thing is um you know i was thinking about this and so they talk about the skid plate on the bottom of the truck uh to cover the batteries and that's great for skidding but my concern is what happens when you really go bashing that thing um what happens if you dent that which will occur i mean when you're out there on an ice vehicle uh, with skid plates uh, and you are on a really legitimately rocky trail where you are hitting the undercarriage and uh, hitting that skid plate, you will oftentimes bend it. What happens? Does that go into the battery? Does it damage the battery? Because we know what happens with those batteries uh, when they get damaged. Watch some videos on Tesla and crashes. Watch Richard Hammond's crash on... Uh, uh, the grand tour, you know, you become an instant fireball. Um, can you, if for example, you're driving that and you get high centered and it is all of the weight of the vehicle is on that skid plate, let's say on a rock or a rock ledge, uh, can the skid plate take it? So I don't know if the skid plate can handle that. You know, they, uh, they didn't, they haven't mentioned it. Rivian isn't talking about it. The, again, these supposed journalists who are just basically a marketing arm of Rivian at this point, don't mention anything about it. I just, it'd be nice to know these things, you know? I guess I'm somebody who, I think about the ways I'm going to use a vehicle and I really dig into the vehicle to see if, it's designed specifically for the ways I'm going to use it, or if I can modify it for the ways I'm going to use it. And if you're, if you're going to be going off-road, doing adventures with your vehicle, you need to think about it like that because ev an auto manufacturer cannot design the vehicle to meet every need. And we just don't know the answers to some of these questions. Uh, so I would encourage anybody who's, um, uh, thinking of buying a Rivian, uh, to really, uh, send in these questions to Rivian and see what their answer is. Um, and then let us know, uh, you know, by posting videos and things. So the, uh, next thing I think to consider, uh, about the R1T is the air suspension. I had air suspension on my Land Rover LR4 and I had kind of a love hate relationship with it. So there's some really cool things about the air suspension. Obviously, the most important, the, the coolest thing is, about it is that you can raise and lower it as you want, right? So, you want to put stuff on the roof, you lower it so you can get up there. You want to uh, drive more sporty on the roads, you can lower it, uh, lower center of gravity, uh, make it better in the turns and things like that. Uh, 
on the road. Sorry about that noise. A train just decided to go by. Uh, when you want to go off-road, you raise it up. Uh, you have increased ground clearance. Now, most air suspensions, as you increase the uh, the ground, the, the suspension for ground clearance, you decrease the um, the articulation of it. How much travel it has is generally decreased. The auto journalists kind of talked about this a little bit uh, and touched on it, but they didn't, and said sort of Rivian's worked around this. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, Land Rover had that claim too, where when uh, one wheel um, went up, it forced uh, the other one air air into the other one to go down, uh, so that it acted a little bit like a live axle or like a solid uh, axle vehicle. Um, I'm not sure if that's kind of what they're talking about here or not, uh, but I will tell you the Land Rover, it wasn't terrible i mean it still was better articulation than a regular suv uh but it certainly was not the kind of articulation that the jeeps had uh while my land rover pretty much in terms of traction could go anywhere the jeeps could go on the articulation department it was definitely lacking and i'm gonna put a fo couple photos up here now and you'll see i mean this rivian is is you can see the articulation is just not there um they talk about being able to do sort of do the same thing that disconnecting a sway bar does by I guess um, the hydraulic system that they have uh, in keeping it tight in the turns you can sort of stop that from working I don't understand all the engineering quite frankly I don't care I just want it to work uh, and it doesn't I mean it doesn't it doesn't work to the extent that a solid axle vehicle with a disconnecting sway bar works it doesn't have that kind of articulation you may not need it and if you don't need it then that's cool that's fine but again these auto journalists i mean oh it's the best rock crawler there is come on I'm, let's not compare the trail that they were doing which was legitimately an off-road trail with actual rock crawling okay because you you went slow over some rocky trails doesn't mean you're out rock crawling um it is a very good vehicle but it doesn't have the articulation that a Gladiator has. I don't even know if it has the articulation that a Toyota uh, 4Runner or Tacoma has, um, or the Ford Bronco, um, for that matter, vehicles like that. And those are independent front suspension vehicles. From the photos uh, that you can see here, it doesn't appear that they necessarily do. Uh, it looks like the articulation is a lot less. Um, so again, it's not all just great and it's not all cookies and cream. And it's not all perfect. The articulation is less, period. End of story. Now, maybe that's okay for you. That's cool, but you should understand it and realize it uh, when you buy it or when you're thinking about buying it. And the auto journalists ought to be upfront and they ought to be honest in their reviews instead of basically being a marketing brochure for Rivian. That pisses me off. At uh, any rate, the other issue with air suspension, and this is something I always sort of had with the Land Rover LR4, is it was always sort of in the back of my mind about a failure of it. Because if they fail, you got a real problem because they'll drop to the bump stops uh, and you can get stuck out there on the trail. Your wheels can get jammed, your tires can be jammed up in the wheel well, uh, you'll have no suspension, you can basically be stranded. And they just have more failure points than, for example, coils uh, or even uh, leaf springs or whatever the, the, the traditional suspension setup is. Now I got the uh, army flying overhead here. Sorry about that. So, you know, with air suspension, obviously you have the air compressor that can fail. You have the air hoses that can fail because you're out on the trail. They get cut. They get disconnected by being hung up on something, whatever. Oftentimes there are uh, small sensors um, that can really be shaken in the vibrations, especially on washboards. If you're going over uh, washboards at, you know, 30, 35 miles an hour over a sustained period of time. Um, and then Ace, the, the computer can just have an issue and for whatever reason, get a bug in it and decide, ah, there's something wrong and drop you to your bump stops. 
um, when you're changing the tire, uh, I don't know the guy, um, the guy, uh, Jerry rig everything. Um, I assume his name is Jerry. Uh, but when he was changing the tire, I think he talked a little bit about it, but there's a specific way you have to, um, jack up the vehicle. You have to put it in a mode, etc., So it knows what's going on and it doesn't try to auto let auto level and that sort of thing. When you're working on a vehicle, you got to be very careful to make sure you turn that off. Otherwise you can get caught up if you're underneath of it because it could drop on you. It's trying to, it's trying to automatically level itself like it, it's supposed to do. Um, and it, you know, if you're changing a tire, you don't do that. Again, you could have an issue. This happened to me the first time I changed a spare on it. I didn't know I'm coming from a traditional vehicle. I jacked up the vehicle, put the spare on. Uh, and as soon as I lowered the vehicle back down, it went and dropped down to the bump stops and I was stuck. Luckily I was only like two miles from my house. So, and I had, I had put smaller wheels, larger tires and and they were pretty in there. I still had a little bit of clearance, but that much. So I was able to just drive really slowly those two miles home and uh, on road. Uh, but if I'd been on a trail, I would have been screwed. Um, so now I learned my lesson, learned how to jack it properly. But uh, again, these are things that you just have to think about and you have to, you have to know about with air suspension. It's got its pluses, but you know, it has its minuses too. Um, and that is more prone to failure just simply because there's more things that can fail. Uh, and when it does, it can be much more catastrophic. I guess not more catastrophic. It's just that chance of it failing are higher and that can be catastrophic if you're out there on the trails. So think about that when you're, um, when you're, uh, when you're looking at the vehicle and when you're considering it, one of the things I love about the Gladiator is I just don't have that worry anymore. Um, I just go. The other thing with the air suspension is there is a lot of playing with it up, down, adjust for this, adjust for that when you're out on the trail. You know, one thing I've noticed when I've gone to the Rubicon is you put it in four wheel and you just go and you drive. The most thing you think about is, okay, do I want to lock the lockers uh, before some feature or some section of a trail? Uh, but there's not as much futzing around with stuff. Um, change this setting, rock crawl, get out of rock crawl, get into sand, get out of sand, get into whatever, um, raise the height, lower the height. Even putting on the, the three inch um, lift kit on the air suspension I liked because basically I didn't have to deal with the adjusting of the suspension anymore. I pretty much just left it there. And that, w that was enough height uh, with the increased, between the bigger tires and um, that increased uh, height that was enough for 90% of the trails. Basically, I only needed to ever lift it to get over a particular specific um, feature or something like that. So, which I think I did like twice after I had it lifted, and that was just nice. It, it's kind of a pain in the butt when you're on the trail constantly having to mess around with the air suspension height. So, think about that, take it for what it's worth when you get it. All right, and so I guess probably like my last uh, sort of gripe about the R1T is just I guess I'll throw it in the category of it's too much and I'll say too much electronics too much luxury without an option to have less and I kind of wish they would and maybe they will down the road maybe they'll offer it with um, fewer of these things uh, but let me just give you an example electric opening uh, frunk electric opening tailgate Electric tonneau cover, although I think there is actually a manual option for that. Um, electric door handles that pop out. All that crap is great on a luxury car. I don't want it on an adventure vehicle. I can open up a hood by myself. I don't need an electric opening hood. You know why? Because it's likely to fail. It's one more piece for dust and mud, water intrusion to fail as electronics are known to do. The door handles. If the door handle doesn't pop out, because it's one of those that's flush, right, and it pops out, can I get into the vehicle? I don't know. That um, the, the sport band or active band or whatever they're calling it is awesome. And, and the fact they even have a credit card that works as a key, plus you have a tr like a traditional key fob, all that stuff is totally cool. But just give me a regular handle, not something that has to pop out. Again, prone to failure. Um, electric tonneau cover. I don't want an electric tonneau cover. It's just going to get jammed up 
what, what's gonna, what do you think is gonna happen to those rails that it goes in as you go off road and you go off road in the desert and get sand all over the place or you go off road in the mountains, you get mud all over the place because that's what's gonna happen. The things are gonna, the things are gonna fill up with mud and they're gonna be a pain. It's gonna either stop working, it's gonna be clunky, it's gonna come off, get jammed, I don't know, whatever. But it's just one last thing I don't need when I can simply just pull a tonneau cover closed. And the same thing with a tailgate. You know, I, I don't need electric on a tailgate. Pop it open and it soft folds down. They figured it out on a Gladiator, they can figure it out on a Rivian, I'm sure. And I guess that falls into the also the same category as too much luxury. Um, and, you know, oh, the other thing with the electronics is that there are no buttons. You can't even adjust the vents by hand. Even those you have to go into the touch screen. There's no buttons for HVAC stuff, uh, basic radio controls. Um, when I come in to the truck after I've been mountain biking, hiking, out for four wheeling, whatever, whatever it is, either I'm wearing gloves oftentimes if it's really cold out and I'm not talking about little thin gloves. I'm talking about like winter gloves or my hands are wet or my hands, my fingers get so dry or there's dust on the uh, screen itself. And a lot of times the touch screens have issues with working. One of the things I love about the gladiator is that everything that I can do on the touch screen, I can also, I also have a button or a knob for. Now I understand there's this big movement right now, you know, of everything has to be minimalist, um, clean, clutter-free, and buttons are clutter, but they're there for a reason. They're clutter for a reason. This is a vehicle, you drive it, and when you're driving, having to take your eyes off the road, go into multiple menus, do something as simple as change where you want your air vent to be, or to raise or lower your air temperature a degree or two, or to change to the next channel on XM radio or whatever it is that you're doing, or even just to try to do it when you just get in the vehicle, you get in, you're out in the snow, you got your winter clothes, your winter uh, gloves on, you get in, you start the car, you want to crank the heat up and you got to take your gloves off. You got to get into the, your, your finger, my, my dad's got this issue all the time. His fingers are so dry in the winter time. The, the, the touch screens don't register. It's just technology for the sake of technology that isn't useful for the intended use of the vehicle as an adventure vehicle. So that, that drives me absolutely insane. And then the other piece of the puzzle is just, you know, the vegan leather on everything. And I just wish they would, uh, I guess, offer another option. You know, if it's an adventure vehicle, cloth is fine or some something like cloth, um, whether it's going to be neoprene or whatever. Um, and you know, if, if you knocked off some of this stuff, you give us, uh, instead of electronic opening everything's, you just make, give us a package that has manual opening hood, manual uh, door, door handles, uh, manual opening, opening tailgate, manual tonneau cover, uh, cloth seats. You know, you could also drop the price by 2,500 bucks or three grand. It would just make the vehicle a little more approachable for people. And I think that that's one of the issues with this thing is that they have designed it as a Range Rover, Land Rover type vehicle. And that's cool, but there's no, for, for the people that want that, but there's no other ability to get into it if you don't want all that stuff. And that's where I feel like they're missing the boat. And I wish they would offer another version of it that's uh, 15 grand less. 20 grand less and doesn't have some of this stuff on it that quite frankly is not only unnecessary but I think a detriment to the type of vehicle that they're building and as they're marketing it as they want people to use it um so those are kind of those are those are my main issues with it I mean I love the fact that it's out there I think it's a really cool concept I can't wait to EV off-road, off-road with an EV, whatever, whatever. Um, I can't wait to be off-roading in an EV because I think that would be really cool. But just the idea of being able to be out there in the woods in dead silence is totally cool. Now, I've still got issues with, they haven't really convinced me yet of the range and things like that, um, that I do need to make sure is 
is okay. I, I'm feeling much more confident about the off-road range, but for me, I need to be able to drive two and a half to three hours to get to my trailhead and then off-road from there and make sure I've got enough range. Um, I'd have to see where the, where, the, uh, uh, where the charging stations are built out, how long exactly the different types of charging make. I don't own an EV, so I'm quite frankly a noob with all that stuff and I'd have to look all that stuff up. I'm less concerned about that than I was uh, six months ago, let's say, uh, about about it. But I do want I do want to see somebody drive it three hours at 80 miles an hour up and down mountains the entire time because that's how I'm going to be driving it, and that's really what I need to see. What kind of range are you getting doing that? Because that's how I'm going to get to my trails. Um, you know, I don't need to know what the range is at 55 miles an hour, perfectly flat road at sea level, because that ain't how I'm driving, so I don't drive 55. So, we'll, you know, we'll see what the, we'll see as other people get it. I'm a little annoyed that they wouldn't let the fast lane guys in. I know why, because it wouldn't be just a love fest. They would probably point out some of the issues. They would put it through its paces, uh, give it some more of the difficult, harder tests, and answer some of these questions, I think, for us and point out some of these negatives. And they're not looking to do that, not yet at any rate. Hopefully they will with time. Hopefully uh, those guys will get their hands on one. So that's my, uh, those are my thoughts. Like I say, for me, I just, I can't buy it with that bed. That four and a half foot bed is an absolute no-go for me. Uh, I am looking forward though to the day when I can buy one. Hopefully a Rivian, I really like, I love the look of it. I actually like the front end. I know that's controversial, that's subjective. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Um, that's up to you and each person who buys it. I personally think it's really cool looking. Um, there are just these other issues. If they could make one that's a little more stripped down, a little more manual, and um, with a five foot bed, I'd probably be in. Even though I'm not a huge fan, I think, of the air suspension, I'd probably suck it up and go with it. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the wheels and tires, I'd probably suck it up and go with it and maybe try to figure a workaround. So, anybody out there that's got them on order, uh, awesome. Put up some videos of them. Uh, I'd love to see answers to some of these real-world issues. Um, modifiability, you know, how do you modify them for your uses, uh, for the different trails you're doing, for the different types of outdoor activities. Uh, let's see the videos. Let's see some of the real-world exploits of these things. Let's see real-world mileage and range tests. Uh, excited to see these things on the road. So if you ordered one, I hope you love it. Uh, it's a very cool vehicle. If you're thinking of one, you're not on the fence, I mean, you're on the fence. These are just some things to think about uh, how you are going to use it. Uh, because I do think there needs to be a counterpoint to all of the uh, the videos we've, we've been watching from the auto journalists. So that's it. Take care, everybody. Be safe out there and uh, I'll see you out there on the trails.